Hi students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. I am Shankar Ganesh, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Application, Don Bosco College, Kutiyam. I am delighted to present a lecture on the topic Internetworking, which comes under the third module of Computer Networks and Security. This lecture is meant for semester 3 BCA course of Kerala University. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the application layer. Application layer is the topmost layer in OSI and TCP IP layered model. This layer exists in both layered models because of its significance of interacting with the user and user applications. This layer is for applications which are involved in communication system. Application layer is where the actual communication is initiated and reflects. Because this layer is on the top of the layer stack, it does not serve any other layers. Application layer takes the help of transport and all layers below it to communicate or transfer its data to the remote host. The application layer includes the following functions. First one, identifying communication partners. The application layer identifies the availability of communication partners for an application with data to transmit. Second one, determining resource availability. The application layer determines whether sufficient network resources are available for the requested communication. Third one, synchronizing communication. All the communications occur between the applications requires cooperation, which is managed by an application layer. Next, we can discuss the application layer protocols. The application layer contains commonly used protocols for usage. The client to server communication can be done by first one DNS, that is domain name system. Second one, remote login. And third one, FTP, that is file transfer protocol. First one, DNS. The domain name system is hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computers, services, or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. It associates various information with domain names assigned to each of the participating entities. It translates more readily memorized domain names to the numerical IP addresses needed for locating and identifying computer services and devices with the underlying network protocols. It delegates the responsibility of assigning domain names and mapping those names to internet resources by designating authoritative name service for each domain. The domain name system also specifies the technical functionality of the database service that is at its core. It defines the DNS protocol, a detailed specification of the data structures and data communication exchanges used in the DNS as part of the internet protocol suite. The domain name system comprises of domain names, domain name space and a name server. First one, domain names. Domain name is a symbolic string associated with an IP address. There are several domain names available. Some of them are generic such as com, edu, gov, net, etc. Second one, domain name space. The domain name space refers a hierarchy in the internet naming structure. This hierarchy has multiple levels from 0 to 127 with a root at the top. Third one, name server. Name server contains the DNS database. This database comprises of various names and their corresponding IP addresses. Since it is not possible for a single server to maintain entire DNS database, therefore, the information is distributed among many DNS surveys. This table shows the generic top level domain names. In this, 
COM is assigned for commercial organization. EDU is assigned for educational institute. GOV is assigned for government organization. MIL is assigned for military group. NET is assigned for major network support. ORG is assigned for non-profit organization and INT is assigned for international. Second one, remote login. Remote login is a process in which user can login into remote site that is computer and services that are available on the remote computer. With the help of remote login, a user is able to understand the result of transferring result of processing from the remote computer to the local computer. Remote login works exactly the same way as desktop sharing. In desktop sharing, there are two separate parties, the host computer and the remote user. To share a desktop, the host computer allows a remote user to view the contents of the host computer's desktop over the internet. The host computer can also hand over keyboard and mouse controls to the remote user. Remote login requires three basic components. First one, software download. Second one, internet connection. And third one, secure desktop sharing network. For remote login to work, both the host computer and all remote users have to download and install the same desktop sharing software. Desktop sharing software typically includes two distinct programs. First one, the desktop sharing client that runs on the host computer. Second one, a viewer program that allows the remote user to view the contents of the host computer's desktop in a resizable window. Next, we can discuss the working of remote login. Remote login will only work if the host computer is powered on, connected to the internet and running the desktop sharing software. Each time when open and run the desktop sharing software on the host computer, the software starts a new session. Each session has a particular ID or password that is required to remotely log in to the host computer. Once the session has been established, most desktop sharing software currently runs in the background of the host computer until a remote login request is made. To log in to the host computer, you need to run the same desktop sharing software and enter in the correct session ID or password. Some services allow to log in through a website. Once logged in, both computers will communicate with each other over a secure desktop sharing network. Access to this network can be free or subscription based depending on the service. While connected, it is able to access keyboard controls, mouse controls, all software and all files on the host machine. For security purposes, all packets of information that are sent over the network are typically encrypted on each end. For added security, no session IDs or passwords are stored on desktop sharing servers they are automatically generated by the host machine. Third one, FTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. FTP is a standard internet protocol provided by TCP IP used for transmitting the files from one host to another. It is mainly used for transferring the web page files from the creator to the computer that acts as a server for other computers on the internet. It is also used for downloading the files to computer from other servers. Next, we can discuss the working of FTP. FTP is a client-server protocol that relies on two communications channels between client and server, a command channel for controlling the conversation and a data channel for transmitting file content. Clients initiate conversations with servers by requesting to download a file. 
using FTP, a client can upload, download, delete, rename, move and copy files on a server. A user typically needs to log on to the FTP server, although some servers make some or all of their content available without login known as anonymous FTP. FTP sessions work in passive or active mode. In active mode, after a client initiates a session via a command channel request, the server initiates a data connection back to the client and begins transferring data. In passive mode, the server instead uses the command channel to send the client the information it needs to open a data channel. Because passive mode has the client initiating all connections, it works well across firewalls and network address translation gateways. In this lecture, we have discussed the application layer and its protocols. Hope all of you have understood the lecture. Thank you.